And and we're back for La our last session last for today. Session. Last and best. Last and best session yeah. for today. Guys, hey, before this is we forget, we should just give a super shout out to the oh. MVPs uh, yeah. answering all those great questions. Thank you. Know, you. Ooh, ah. yeah. Thank you. Again, uh, just representative example of the awesome PowerShell community. Join, be part of the PowerShell community. Yep. Let's go. And so, guys, what we're going to do is this is kind of a warm up for what we're going to do on August 1st, where we go through all the details in this. This is more than just a warm up, though. You can start immediately using this today. I like to refer to this as immediately effective. And so, mm. let's start off with, though, thank God you're not physically in this room because <laughs> what I'm about to show you, I've actually had people threaten to hit me. Ooh. So you have I'm to here. imagine that. It, it, uh, no, don't hit me, man. Don't. It, you okay. just got punched by Jeffrey Snower. That's going to look really good on my mm. resume. Um, so we've been spending all of our time in the console. And God, I love the console. And we've been working on commands. And here's what you want to do. You want to work stuff out in here, copy it, and like we did earlier, paste it into a script. But I want to show you something that comes with PowerShell, and it's the ISE. And Ooh. Yeah, and ooh, and this is where... So I'm going to close this console, and guys, I, I, I want to show you this real quick so that we can kind of get into it, but um, I'm going to start the ISE, and, you know, they're going to do that picture-in-picture -picture thing, so let me lower this thing down here a little bit. Now, I'm going to show you... Don't yell at me, please. Don't yell at me. First of all, there's a scripting pane up here. Down here is a console pane. Then there's this commands pane. I'm going to simplify this screen real quick. Boink. And I want to show you these buttons across the top. You can have the, the uh, scripting pane on top and a console on the bottom. You can have them side by side, which if you have two monitors, this is awesome yep. to put this between the dual monitors. But I'm going to make it even simpler. I'm just going to go to one pane and so I can kind of shorten things up a little bit here and, and bring this down a little bit. Here's the part that you're going to threaten to beat me to death with. I'm going to hit Control R. That flips me between the scripting pane and the console, and you might be asking yourself, well, this looks kind of like a console. Yeah, this is a damn fine console. Remember this morning when we were talking and Jeffrey was saying, hey, look, we can't touch that original console thing that, you know, 30 oh, control years. control R toggles. Uh, huh? I didn't know that. What? Control, control R? R toggles? Yeah, it's awesome. You're, oh, I keep trying to remember control D versus control I. Like, D, what the hell's D No, I think, I think Bruce Payette, I. I think Bruce Payette did something with control R, and I'm like, ooh. So, yeah, control R. Oh, I learned something. Oh, that's, oh, yeah, right on, bro. So, here's the deal. I'm going to type something here, and you're going to see that this is not the console that you think we are. First of all, yeah. let me clear it up. Now, watch. I'm going to do get, ooh, look at what it's doing. Look at what it's doing. Dude, this is like, it's, it's IntelliSense helping me through here. This is like totally awesome. And watch, you might notice that it's also color syntax. So here's the deal, and we're going to ask Jeffrey about this because uh, this is the coolest thing in the world. You've got a console that has color syntax coding, which helps a lot when you're typing to see if you're typing in error. And it's got this help flying at me as I'm typing. Is this your solution to the, 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 the console going forward? Because this, yeah, exactly. this makes, it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, right. Take, spend a couple hours with this and stop asking me about improving the console. That's the, <laughs> Which is what the, the thing was this morning is don't ask about the improving the console because they're doing it right now. And this is the way to do it. So let's use this console and let's, let's, let's take a command here. Let's do a git WMI object. Yeah, it, it's okay. It's okay. Well, it'll all be good. Win32 underscore logical disk. I just want to show you, I want to get something to work, and I'm going to type something in you probably haven't seen before. You will, but and I'm going to do device, uh, filter on device, ID um, equals uh, C. I want you to see what it gives me as an output. Well, absolutely nothing, because I screwed up the filter. And so, what this command now gives me is, it gives me some useful information. It's giving me, um, I'm having a scroll issue here, hang on. It's giving my drive C and it gives me free space and size. I don't like the numbers, so I'm going to do something in flight. I want you to notice I'm building a command to make sure that it works first, and then I'm going to show you how easy cool this gets. So what I'd like is I'd like to select, and I'm only oh. going to take one property for this demonstration, so I'd like to use the free space, but you know what I can't stand is, okay, let's just do free space. Watch. 
I don't know about you, but I don't really like that number because that number is like in bytes and it's like not making me happy because I want to see it like gigabytes or something like that. Because can't point stuff out. Yeah. Can you, can, so you did get WMI object. Do uh -huh. get sim object. And then yeah, wait. Yeah. No, let's start from scratch. Okay, let's start from scratch. Yeah. You want you want get sim object. Get sim object. Get sim object. Or sim instance. Instance, sorry. Yeah. And uh, say win32 lodge uh, and then tab. Tab, 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 no, tab, see the, tab. See the red light there? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, no, go back. Oh, and, I've gone too far. Yeah, no, uh, oh, go back, go back. Cancel, go back. cancel, cancel, cancel. Logical and then control space. Logical. Control space. Control. And then control, control. space? Yeah. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. IntelliSense, that's awesome. IntelliSense against the WMI namespaces. Oh, crazy? and guys, when you start working with WMI, th one of the hardest things is dealing with the namespaces and finding the classes. And this is one of the most important technologies out there. We haven't had time today to go through it, but this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so oh, and yeah, you're oh, going yeah. to be wanting to use get sim instance instead of the old-fashioned command that I'm going to use right now. Oh, okay. And okay. so I'm going to do select free space. I can't stand that number. So I'm going to do a uh, custom column. I'm going to, just like we had done earlier, because I don't like that, I'm going to create my own. There's a reason I'm doing this, but don't panic. We're almost there. And so I'm going to call it free GB. And, uh, oops, would help if I put in something to tell it what I was and doing. And... You're not showing the best practices. Hit cancel. Hit, hit, hit uh, cancel up to the pipeline. Now hit, hit carriage turn. Oh well, but 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 it, oh, it doesn't do that in the ISC. It doesn't only in the console. Uh, I I know what you. So here's what Jeffrey is saying, and I'll, I'll show it to you in there and in, in here. So because I want you to see this, because you guys, this will actually be really interesting. I want you to see that. Watch. Uh, so I'm doing this this long line here. Get WMI object. Win32 underscore logical disk. Logical disk. Filter. And device ID uh, equals C colon. And guys, here's the thing is that I want to, that's great and that's fine, that's dandy, but I'm going to start typing this long command that's going to be wrapping around. A really great, great way to work at the console is to realize that there are certain things that automatically give us line continuation, the pipeline being one of them. Watch what happens here when I strike enter after the pipeline. See these things? This means we, we, I, I'm not sure, but it means you're you're we I, we get it. You're still on the same line. Just keep typing. So from here, I can do my select. It becomes easier to read and it's easier to edit when you're doing stuff in real time. Um, select and I'll do my at n, n equals okay. uh, free gb and whoops uh, it's going? late in the day x e equals -doo -doo. and i'm going to take the current object across the pipeline i'm going to grab its free space and i want to see it in gigabytes so i'm going to divide it by 1 gb we have these built-in things to help us with math because i'm not good at math so these help me with math and so the number looks uh, strike enter on this line number looks better but Ooh. i'd like it all rounded up so i'm just going to do this as an integer real quick now I'm going to do it as an integer real quick, but it's going to yell at me because I didn't run both lines. So let me oh, do this. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. And so as int, and oops, now I screwed something up. Brackets. Hang on. Brackets. I forgot the brackets. I'll get you a good line of code. Don't panic. This is all in the slides, too. So if I can fail to type, boom. So I've got a nice line now. I've got something that's giving me information that I want. It's pretty cool, got it all worked out. What I'm going to do is cut and paste. Now, from here, you know, cut and paste is kind of hard to do, but if you did this over here, cut and paste is really easy to do because, you know, what's funny is they figured out how to use things like, oh, let's see, and this old, this old technology called Control-C, Control-V. So, I'm going to say Control-C. I'm going to hit Control-R to flip the screens. I'm going to Control-V. Oh, yeah, baby. Now I've got my line. Now we're going to start having some fun because we're going to save this as a script right now. File, save as. We'll uh, save it uh, here in uh, my scripts folder. We're going to save it as, uh, well, we did I love you. Uh, let's do this as, uh, let's just call it diskinfo.ps1. 
And I can run it from right here. If I run it, boom, shows me a result. Uh, it helps if I clear the screen and everything else I typed, but I can run it, boink, and it shows me the results. I'm happy, gonna hit control R, everything's good. Now we wanna start adding stuff to this. So let's make this a little better. First of all, you know, this is a nice script and all this, but if I give it to somebody else, all it's doing right now is getting information off the C drive mm. on the local machine. That's yeah. not cool. I want it to be able to get it from whatever computer I want it to get it from. Now I could sit here and hard code this. Dude, you didn't spell uh, computer name right. I'm not spelling anything right. Computer. Mammy. Name. Localhost. And this will work, but yeah, go ahead and save it. That's fine, but here's the problem. If I give this to a friend, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to go in here and edit my script, and I don't want people editing my script. What could possibly go wrong? So, especially if you digitally signed it. Especially if I digitally signed it. So what I'm going to do is let's do a simple concept. Let's make a variable up here called dollar sign computer name. And let's set it right now equal to uh, localhost just to have some value in there. And instead of, we'll put the variable in here. Now, this is kind of common to a lot of other scripting languages where what you would do is you'd put your variables up here so you'd make it easier for somebody to edit your script. I still don't like this whole editing my script thing, but I want you to see that this still works, right? All I'm doing is, is putting it into dollar sign computer name, still prints it out. Everything's cool. You know, let me show you how to test a script properly from the console because I'm about to blow your mind. Something that these guys have done is awesome. So let's run the script from the console. Since a lot of scripts get run from the console, I actually like to test them from there. Um, yep, CD scripts. And so we called this disk info. Run it. We're good. Happy, happy. Happy, happy, but you know what? I've been learning PowerShell, and as an administrator, this isn't exactly what I expect. I expect, I don't want to go in and edit computer name. No, when we have commandlets and stuff, we get parameters that we can adjust. So, you know what would be really cool, I think? I think it'd be really cool if there's this special keyword called param. Open parentheses close parentheses, indent so that Jeffrey loves you. That's right. Make it look pretty. I want you guys to notice something. I'm going to save this. So I'm going to hit Control S and save it. I'm going to go back to my PowerShell console and watch this. I'm going to clear the screen, dot disk info, dash, oh. I just made a parameter. Ooh. It was so easy to make a parameter. So now I can type in any computer I want. Now, mm. I'm not selecting out a computer name, which we will fix, but I want you to kind of get the concept of, I just put a variable in there. Matter of fact, let's do another one. Let's just call it bogus. Just so you can see, I'm going to go back here. Watch, 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 watch. This is so cool. Um, let's do it. Ooh. I'm making parameters on the fly for whatever I need. This is becoming what's called a parameterized script. And what you're getting is it's starting to kind of smell, look, and feel more like a commandlet. And it's making my life a little bit easier. Mm. I'm liking this. So let's try this. I, I, there's another thing that would be really nice is if, if for, for an instance, at least, get help dot disk uh, info. Yep. Look at what PowerShell's doing. PowerShell is starting to build that syntax for me. But I, I, computer name, it says it's an object. No, uh, let me go in here and you can strongly type what the variables are. We didn't haven't talked much about that, but I want this to be a string. So when I go out here and do this again, notice Ooh. it's now making it a string. And I want you to notice that between the chihuahuas, it says string. It doesn't say that it can take multiple objects. We don't have any of the binkies in there. So here's how we put binkies in there. Ooh. Ooh. And 
I'm starting to actually get syntax now built on these parameters. And the only thing I've had to do so far is add one keyword different from what I'm used to, and this one called param. But wait, there's more. Oh, wait, it's better. We're going to turn something on so that you can use parameter attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's yeah, yeah. do commandlet binding. This turns on something called parameter attributes. And here's the thing. I don't really want to have local host in here. What hey, I want to do, oh, what here? do you want me to do? What? Just hit save. Just hit save, yeah, yeah. And now do get help. Okay, oh, I see what you, okay, now. What, what? what, what? He added one line of code. One line. One, one line of code, and watch what happens. What? Well, that wasn't, that did wasn't very. Did I save it? Did I save it? I think I saved it. Yeah. Oh, well, we got common parameters, so yeah, oh, yeah. it did okay. it. Okay. We just need to do the, um, yeah, so we got common parameters. So this is actually making the syntax full. Watch, watch. So command line binding will let us use something called parameter attributes, things like making things mandatory. Let me show you an example. I'm going to get rid of this default. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, parameter. I got to spell this right. A mandatory, mandatory equals true, and I think I got the syntax correct. Now I want to point out that this is a parameter attribute. I'm going to say mandatory is true. It only affects the next parameter after it. It's not going to affect bogus. So watch. Look at what happens to the syntax on this. Notice up here, I had the brackets around it. Now look, there's no brackets around that. This is going to become mandatory. So watch as I start to try to run this. I'm going to do disk info. I'm going to run it. Oh, you got to give me a computer name, man. So it's mandatory now, DC. And now it works. I can do it. I've made it mandatory. I can also then do, of course, I've got the actual parameter. So in just two lines of code, we're making our own parameters on our script, a parameterized script, and we're getting syntax. But you know what? I want to be a nice guy when I give this to somebody else. I want to be a really nice guy. When I give it to you, I want to be a great guy. So what do you say we add in a little bit of help? Love it. Love it. Let's do some help. Guys, this is a, uh, uh, a, a, a block comment. Now, usually when you type in comments, see how they're in green? Usually the, the parsing engine that will just ignore what's ever in there. But with PowerShell, watch. I'm just going to type in a couple of things. Synopsis. I'm going to say this is the short explanation. And it's OK if I have typing mistakes at this point because tired. Description, this is the long description. Yeah, everybody's going to be making fun of me because I can't type in. I'm going to type in parameter. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, parameter. And I'm going to say computer name. And I'm going to say this is for remote computers. And just, just a couple more things here real quick. Uh, example. Um, let's do an example of, uh, oh, let's do uh, disk info uh, dash computer name you know, remote, and let's do one more. This is for this. Can we do an example? This. Oh. <laughs> I can't type at all. This is for a remote computer. Watch. Look, guys, just a couple of things. This is going to be totally amazing. It is all over. Watch, 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 watch. Get help. Looky. Does it look like PowerShell help now? Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! So I've got, I've got name, synopsis. Look, it's building the syntax. i got description. But wait, that's the short help. Watch, 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 watch. Full. Oh, now look what PowerShell's built for me. It shows me the parameters, the parameter <laughs> definitions. It's gonna, I've got an example down here for crying out loud. This is what I want. I want to give this to somebody else that works with PowerShell because this is what they expect. Oh. This is making me so happy. Now, can I just point something out? Yes, absolutely. I can never remember any of this. I can't remember any of this either. Well, you did. Well, That's pretty good. Well, then, I can't yeah. do that. So show them the amazing Control J. So, guys, oh, I'm going to hit. The I'm only hit, way I can deal with and, it. And, and, and here's the thing. And when we come back on August 1st, this is going to become one of your best friends. Yeah. So I'm going to start a new tab. Just say, I'm going to hit Control J. It's going to bring up snippets. Now, I want to point something out. I'm not quite done with this demonstration yet, but these snippets, look at this, commandlet snippet. It gives you the basics of putting this together. 
And the advanced one, the complete one, is super rock and cool. Yeah. But we've got comment blocks, and we've got some of the, the constructs and, and the, the loops that we're going to be using on August 1st that you'll be able to work with um, to help you build this. Um, so you could actually pick a, a, a snippet, and look, it auto-creates all these possibilities for you. And, oh, look, it... See, all you got to do there now go. is just go in and... And so if you are a deeply flawed human like me and cannot smell synopsis, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Just, yeah, this is what my problem is. So you can use this as a template and to fill it out. But wait, there's more we're not done yet because here's the deal. Um, this is nice. This is a parameterized script, and you can do a lot of powerful things with parameterized scripts, but, you know... I want to take this to the next level just a little bit more so you can get an idea of where we're going to go on August 1st. Take it to 11. Take it to 11. My app goes to 11, it does. <laughs> um, so we're going, to go, we're going to crank this bad boy up because my ISE goes to 11. Save script now. Let's do this. So that you can see the typing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the help for it right now. Okay, so don't don't freak out on me. I'm well, just going to remove Why are you doing that? Well, because I want him to... Oh, I guess I can just scroll. Yeah, let's no, do no, this. No, no, no. Click, click the button. Oh, click the button. I, yeah, just Collapse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Because ISE dude, goes to 11, uh, dude. Because ISE goes to 11. So here we go. Guys, right now we're running this like a script. I don't know about you, but we ain't done this all day long. We haven't typed in and, and run this script. What mm. we've been doing is we've been running things like verb, dash, noun, verb, dash, noun. God, I'd like to do the same thing, too. If only I knew how. Well, here's how. I'm going to add one more keyword to your day of fun. Function. You need to give it a name. Now, we're going to give it a proper name. Verb dash noun. Don't do this. Gimme dash stuff. No, gimme is not on the approved verb list, so knock it off with making up your own verbs. There's... <laughs> And everybody, uh, you, you got to do it at least once, right? But here, we're going to do get, dash, and we're just going to call it disk info. Now, the function, it has an open squiggly, and then when you're done with your code, all the way at the end. By the way, show me. We're going oh, to do ISC yeah. later. We're going to do what? We're going to talk about ISC a lot next time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, what do, you, what do you want them to see? Get rid of the last squiggle. The, the last yeah, squiggle? get rid yeah. of that. Get, get rid of the last squiggle. Yeah. Okay, see the first squiggle? See that squiggle? See, the, see the red? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Missing close. Missing close. So it's trying to help us understand where we're making Isn't mistakes. Isn't that cool? So you see that little it's squiggle. Totally. It's actually pretty useful. And you really guys see useful. on the screen the little red squiggly that, that Jeffrey's talking about is this one right here. And so if you leave your mouse over it, it tells you, hey, you're missing something here, bro. And in this case, dude. Dude. And so dude. We're, we're missing that bottom squiggly. Now, you're only what, going to like two. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. So I'm going to indent this so that it's easier to read. So you can see that I have a function. Now, don't do what I'm about to do because this is just, I'm going to show you something much cooler than this. I'm going to save this. And I want to show you, here's one of the interesting things. I'd like to run that script and then use that function. Well, here's the challenging thing. Watch, I, if I run disk info and I hit enter, what happens when you run a script is the script runs, it executes, and then everything is discarded out of memory. This is a good thing. But here's the problem. I just ran a script, and it has a function called get disk info. So what happened is the script just ran. It just made this function up in memory for me. And when the script ended, it just killed it. So there is no get disk info. No, not so much. So I'll show you a, a unique way to do this. Now, this is a great way for testing, but I, I got a better solution for you. Mm. Dot space. Ooh, dot showing them backslash. The dot. I know. I, I know love it. it. No, it's I, awesome. This retains the stuff in your script in memory. So watch, I'm going to run That's it. That's not the right explanation. Okay, but we'll get within the, to, to, to tell them. Okay, so here's the way it works. So what happens is there's a stack, right? And so what happens is uh, when you run something in general, you create a new stack and you put all your variables in that stack. And then when you do an exit or a return, that stack goes away and they all get cleared up. When you dot something, what happens is it runs, it doesn't create a new stack. It runs it in the current stack. So any new variables or anything that gets uh, created, they get created here. When you exit, you just exit, but they stick around. But they stick around. Yeah. So it's called and, dot and, sourcing. And you Unix guys will you know, like cotton right onto this. This is dot sourcing. But isn't that what I said? Only not nearly as well as you said it. 
Okay. Okay. So watch. Git disk. Watch. I'm going to hit tab completion at this point. Git disk. Git disk image. Git disk. Ooh. Hey, tab Ooh. completion. Look. Looks like a commandlet. Looky. 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 Computer Ooh. name DC. Oh, we are rock and roll. Okay. I don't like having to do this dot source stuff. Bobby, did you, you, you know, when you hit that commandlet? By the way, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Up arrow. Up arrow. Up arrow. Dash. O. Tab. Ooh. Oh, out, oh, out variable. Out variable. So, let's, um, A. What do you want to call it? A? A. Everything's A. Everything's A. Now, dollar sign A. No, dollar sign A. So now, oh, I don't, yeah. you guys see that it just sent it out to the variable. It's some of those common parameters that we can use. So now we've got this stuffed into a variable. It's awesome. So what that meant was when you put that commandlet binding there, it said common parameters. Errors. There's a bunch of common parameters, and these are functions. You know, just by putting that one thing in, you say, hey, PowerShell engine, could you do some stuff work for me? Could you, like, give them output variable? And then could you do, like, error action and error variable and warning action and warning variable? All really cool stuff. Well, you know, let's take this one step further, and you and you can certainly throw uh, 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 stuff into this. But but guys, this is going to be the meat of, of what we we do on August first. Uh, yeah, and that's you know this is nice, but this isn't something quite yet what we refer to as an advanced function, although it's getting there. And what I want to be able to do is I don't want to have to dot source and run this as a script. That doesn't make sense to the junior admin that I want to give this to. It's really worth the investment. It's going to take some time. Right. It's not going to be the simplest thing in the world. It's going to take some time, but you really need to invest in learning about modules. Okay? Because modules are the future. They're really worth the investment. Yes. You know, why don't we just, like, settle in and teach them how to do and, it? And teach them how to do it. So, you yeah. guys ready? Hey, hardcore, here we go. Yeah. We're going to wake hardcore up, how up. to make a module. Wake up. First of all, I'm going to show you the cheesy way to make a module. Nope. Oh, cheesy. File. Save as. Notice my, my, my script. That's that's it. That's 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 it. That's 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 it. That's that's how you make a mod you PSM one. Watch 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 watch, watch out what, 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 what you can now go to sleep. Yeah, you can watch, watch, watch. Now, now look, because it's not in the special place that we're going to talk about, I'm going to have to manually import this module. And this module is called PSM1. So this is kind of like the old V2 way we'd always have to work well, do with dash modules. Oh, oh. Do, uh, 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 but watch. Do, do, do it again. Do it, do it do again. again. Then, then, slash, slash force, slash verbose. You want to do dash force. force. That does it again. Force. Force. The other force. The other force. And then dash for both. For both. And just, this oh, just verbose. shows you. For both. Yeah. See? Ah, removing one and import. Oh, I love that. I love that. So, it so says, yeah, it's importing the, the, the get disk info. And this is actually when you, especially, especially on August 1st, when we're working with, you know, you have to, you have to reload modules. You have to do, this is actually very useful to have around. So I've got a module that's imported. Now I can just do get disk info. But, you know, it, this is still not exactly the way that I, I want it because I don't want to have to say, here's this thing. I made you this pretty module. It's a PSM1 file, and I, you're going to have to import it every time you want to use anything in it. That just doesn't make sense. Dude, so, how hard was that? It was easy. I know it was easy, but you guys have, like, magical locations. Oh, there is the magic, yes. Yeah, so... You're so, going to let them in on the secrets. Well, I don't know. I see. Yes. Can I cat um, ENV? Is it PS module path that shows us all the magic? So there are two paths here. These are the magic locations right now, as far as we're going to talk about them, the magic locations. If you put your module in these locations in a special way, they too will be dynamically loaded. Dude, what are you doing there? That's odd. What? I never my do way. it that way. What, what, do you, what do you want to do? Show it my way. Okay, we'll do it your way. Can you uh, switch me? So what I do is I do, I do, uh, oh, I don't know, let's make this bigger. I do dollar sign. Okay, oh. and there, that looks the same, but check this out. Because we need to do dollar sign, dollar sign. we can do split. 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 Oh, split. So do it your way, yeah. And then you break it out. There you can read it. Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay, let's, let's do it as back to him. split. Oops, so I can't spell split. I can spell spit, apparently. And what are we, we're doing on what, the semicolon? semicolon? Yeah. yeah. There's quotes. Quotes. Uh, quotes, 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 quotes. Ah. 
Oh, yeah, now see? we can read the two paths. Yeah, this makes a lot much better. So here's the first path that I want you guys to take notice of. This is the path, and I'm going to show this to you graphically for a second, just so you can kind of see this. I'm going to go out. This is where uh, PowerShell gets installed, Windows System 32. And there's a reason I'm showing you graphically. Sometimes this makes more sense. And so I'm going to go out where it says Windows PowerShell. And you'll see this folder called Modules. You see all these modules? These are modules. Here's the thing. Don't put yours here. Yeah. This is not for you. A lot of guys will say, oh, just put it in there because I, I know where it is, all that kind of stuff. No, don't put your stuff there. This is the special place for Microsoft. You have your own special place, and that is this one. Your account, Documents, Windows, PowerShell, Modules, but this doesn't exist. Let me show you. I'll, let me show you graphically. Sometimes this makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to go out here to Users. And I'll go out to student company is my account, and it's my documents through here. You see, there's no module called uh, uh, Windows PowerShell, and there's nothing called uh, modules. So you will need to make it. Now, I, I know I'm making it graphically just because I happen to be here, but you can do it with PowerShell, of course, Windows PowerShell. And then underneath of it, you make... It would have been faster if I'd done it in PowerShell. Yeah, oh, my God, easier. what the hell's the matter with me? So, modules. Because now you're going to have to type it right. Now I'm going to have to type it right. Now, here's the thing, and this is very, very important. The name of your module, you know the thing I call diskinfo.psm1? Needs to be the name of the folder that you're going to create here. They need to match. So, I'm going to say new folder, and I'm going to say disk info. Now... I've got this folder. Let's do this. I need to put my module in there. So let me go grab my module, which was this PSM1, disk info. I'm going to take it, put it out to here. Oh, yeah, I should have never done this graphically, but <laughs> now I'm here. I'm going to put it. Now, here's the important thing. See? Look. Module name, the, the module folder name, and then... The name of the duder inside, watch. Let's close this so you know I'm not cheating. Let's see, I wonder if I can get some help on... Uh, Wait, did you start a fresh window? Is that yeah, a fresh I started window? a brand oh, new one. Missed it. started a brand new one. Oh, here, just in case anybody missed it. I don't want you to miss it. I'm not cheating. Let me close this thing out. I, I'm oh. not cheating. Brand new window. Get help. Um, is there anything uh, in commandlets on uh, disk information? Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ooh, hmm. right there first. Number one, hmm. baby. Help found my commandlet inside my module. And, well, let's just try it. Uh, get uh, disk uh, info, or, or not image, info, dash computer name, DC. Ooh. <laughs> okay, the guys in the back, you can tell that we're getting up to the end of the day because the guys in the back are, are now going, ah! So uh, let, me, let, me, let me just show you the, uh, the code again, and, and Jeffrey, please go ahead and add in. So all yeah, we're really doing is doing functions. We're properly naming them so that they look like commandlets. Notice I just gave it a little bit of help. There are about underscore comment-based help files for this to help you with this, or you can use control J to get the snippets. Yep. And notice I took a working line of code. The only thing I did was I added param, couple of variables in there, maybe an attribute, and believe me on August 1st, we'll talk a lot more about attributes. Attributes rock. Oh, they totally rock. So with this simple little bit of code and saving it in the special place as a PSM1 file, I've made a module. In fact, in, like all modules, I'm not just going to put one function in here. I'm going to put as many mm. functions. I'm going to make as many tools as I need, and I'm going to put them into this module. So just uh, I'll just make it foo, and I'll make function bar. No, I know they're not properly named, but you get the idea. Now, in that with that module, I'm just adding more and more tools to this module. Now, I can do that. Save it. Save it. And save it. Save it. it. Uh, so um, import it. Oh, import. Import module, and it's, uh, I forgot info. what the name is, disk info, right? And yeah. we want to. Minus force. Force and verbose. No, that's, or, fine. that's fine. Hmm. 
Oh, did you expect it to come up and do the whole, you're using a yeah. not improved? You know, it, it, what he's talking about is, and matter of fact, I have to verb. play with this. I think, food let's dash do this. Bar. Well, let's do uh, gimme dash foo. And uh, yeah, yeah, bar dash foo. And let me save it. Oh, you know, it's the force. That's the problem. Oh, it's the force that's yeah, doing so, it. Uh, so remove it. Remove it. Remove so module. Remove module. By the way, so force basically says, I, you're telling us we know what you're doing. Ignore all the errors. Just do what I told you to do. Dang it. So what, what happens if you don't type force? And this is actually uh, disk info. Oh, dude, I don't know why it's not saying it. Hmm, okay, I don't know why it's not saying, but here's what usually happens. If you use an unapproved verb, it comes up and it says in yellow, knock it off. Stop using unapproved verbs. Don't be a dope. Don't be a dope. So use the approved verbs. And what are we doing on this? Uh, day? I see something up. It gives us, uh, oh, 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 I, they were trying to, you guys don't understand what's up on the teleprompters in here right now. The guys, the production team, was trying to be effing funny. <laughs> they didn't use an appropriate and, verb. And so, first of all, here's what they typed in. So you all can see it. They said, dollar sign mention this, pipe to, and I can't even read what character star? they're using. Is this is, were you guys Asterisk. up on site? Um, and then, it, was it a squiggly? A squiggly, um, it gives... Us good feedback in squeeze. This is this is. Have you guys been awake at all today? This is the crappiest <laughs> PowerShell I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is remarkable. We've been we've been busting our bums all day long, and you type this in. Please, one of the MVPs in the forums. Somebody, you don't even have to be an MVP. You take this and show them how it really should be done in the Cliff Note version. Yeah, but are, the point are you guys is, good at AV? I thought we had a Google hunting moment there. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, so good I at guess, AV? That's good. Yeah, Keep you're, doing you that. Got, well, stay in AV. Um, Keep so doing that. The, what I think they're trying to say is that there's a poll up. Am, am I correct? There's a the poll, poll up? Yes. And it's a real important poll. So make sure you, you yeah. do the poll up on the site because the feedback for this session is, is very important. Super As a matter important. of fact, we're, we're, we're starting to get kind of towards the end of, of what we'd, we've done for the, the day. But your feedback on the session is very important. Um, just so that you know, we're going to dive deep, deep, deep. And we're going to do it in a day. So it's going to be definitely a day of... Chewy chewy, chewy stuff into tool making. Basically making uh, tools, you're gonna show uh, the different kind of parameter attributes, more about the help, um, how to, see we've only scratched the surface. Our, co our commandlet right now doesn't accept pipeline input. It's not making changes, so we're not supporting what if and confirm. Mm. And you know, we might wanna make our own views. We, there's so many things yeah. that we're gonna wanna do. So we've actually still got a lot of work to do. We're just not going to do much more of it today. <laughs> so <laughs> before we do a review, is there anything you want to add to the stuff that we've done today? Is it telling no, anybody? I think, we, I think we've been having fun. We've walked through a bunch of stuff. Ton more. Ton, ton more. more. But again, the key things I want you guys to, to walk away with are, one, uh, this spirit of exploration, right? Go explore. Explore the help. Explore the help. Do you explore the help, explore the forums, go out on the internet, try some things. Um, and when you get confused, ask questions. Do not be embarrassed, not sit there and say, oh, that's a dumb question. No, 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 ask that question. <clears throat> you have a great community that will give you help. And just a, 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 hopefully you've seen the sense of fun. There's just an incredible amount of power in PowerShell. And it's fun to do this exploration, by the way, and it's safe too. Because you know you go and you have the minus what if and the and the uh, confirm and verbose, so you know it's uh, you can explore and you can have fun and and do it safely. And do it safely. And it, you notice that we've been having a lot of fun today because it's been a joy for the two of us to be able to spend the day talking with everybody about PowerShell because it is just a lot of fun, especially when you get past some of the learning curve stuff. So you, we did get help and the the amazing discoverability of get help of finding commandlets, regardless of what product that you're working with, it'll find it for you. 
And then you can go into the help files, the examples, the rich, the syntax that's in there, the definitions of the parameters. So get help is definitely number one tool. Something you definitely want to get good at, though, is that middle piece we did just after the meal break of understanding the pipeline and how the pipeline mm. works. Because if you can't figure out how to get two commandlets to work together, you're just not going to have a lot of fun. That's so very important. So remember, Don Jones has a great book on Learn Windows PowerShell in the Month of Lunches. It's Chapter 9. I know it sounds like I'm trying to sell a book. I just want you to have more resource information on working through that. And go out to the forums on PowerShell.org and ask about that. Also, the thing that really changes, and I have to say, you know, understanding the pipeline, yep. that made a huge difference for me. When V2 shipped and remoting, that's what changed administration for me, and it's changed it forever. The remoting, being able to hit multiple machines, being able to do multiple things at once, being able to put those into scripts. Yeah has yep, yep. really, really made a huge, a huge difference. But so, wait, so that's the stuff everybody, you know, PowerShell's run all of our websites, you know, all of yeah. our big internet sites, and, and that's why. Because I got a gazillion of these things, how am I going to do things? How am I going to do things? And how I think you guys have seen things? today a great example that PowerShell, you can learn it. You've learned a lot of it today. And oh, you know what I didn't tell them about? What, what did you tell them? Our sacred vow. The sacred vow. So, uh, so here's the sacred vow. The whole story behind the sacred vow. The sacred vow is basically the story that says, "Hey, you're IT pros. Your hair's on fire. The last thing in the world we know. The last thing in the world you want to do is take your time to go learn a new tool. And yet here I am, and I'm sitting here asking you to learn this new tool." And why? And the answer is because it's going to help you. And there's a set of things that you have to learn. You have to learn the verbs. You have to learn the syntax. Uh, you have to learn the pipeline. And you have to learn how to do things, how to explore, etc. But my sacred vow to you is that if you learn those things, I'm going to do everything in my power to reuse those words, those concepts, those techniques over and over and over and over again so that your investment in learning is the best payback, the best investment you ever made. Now let me get concrete about what that means. When we decided, hey, we need to support workflow, the original design for workflow was this very unusual thing. Oh, you know, you got some weird syntax for workflow steps and workflow right. sequences and all that. I said, guys, whack, you forgot our sacred vow. Our sacred vow is they've already learned PowerShell. Use that over and over and over again. So now when, you, when we teach you about workflow, what you're going to see is you just type instead of function, foo, you type workflow foo. And then you write PowerShell. And the difference is that now it looks just like PowerShell, except it's got very different semantics. It isn't run by the traditional PowerShell engine. We take that PowerShell syntax and we transcode it into a Windows Workflow object graph and we give it to the Windows Workflow engine to execute, its execution engine. But you, your experience, looks just like PowerShell, even though underneath the covers, it's very, very different. Why? Because of our sacred vow. You learn this stuff, and we're going to do it over and over and over again. Use those techniques over and over and over again. You learn how to manage Exchange, you're going to be able to manage Link. Having learned those two things, you're going to be able to learn how to manage Azure and SQL and all that because of the sacred vow. And I have we to take that super serious. And I have to say, it's, it's a great honor to sit here next to Jeffrey Snower, and it's been a great honor to be able to talk with, with members of the PowerShell team, because guys, you gotta realize that sacred vow, they've stuck to it. They've stuck to it over, the, over several, uh, you know, the last five, six years that I've been doing this, there's one guarantee that I've always had, and that's, if I'm gonna take the investment to learn this, they're not gonna screw me on the back end by suddenly ripping everything out, replacing it, and totally changing everything. Nope, I'm going to get commandlets, I'm going to get parameters, I've got a scripting environment that makes sense, that's stable, that's being moved forward. It's always going to be improved, but I know exactly what to expect. And I know what to expect when I go to Active Directory, to manage Exchange, to manage whatever, it's the same. And that experience makes this initial investment a little painful at first, but it will pay off, and it'll pay off for years and years and years, and you've heard it from the architect, they are so totally committed to that. So, a little bit of information of, of how you get some more information. So let me just, uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna leave your guys' mistake up on there, a uh, very embarrassing thing that you did. <laughs> and I wanna just put up, 
Um, a couple of things uh, for you all. First of all, you know that at the MVA, where you're at, or yeah, MVS, MVA stuff, we're going to have another presentation. This is going to be on scripting and tool making. Now, it's on August 1st, but if you're watching this as a video, look for the next title, Scripting and Tool Making. So we'll, we're, we're going to do that. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. It's going to be totally awesome. A couple of other things. If you have a question, please, for, don't, don't. The only mistake you're going to make if you have a question is not ask it. So there are a couple of places you can go to get an answer. Of course, PowerShell.org. I think I've said that like 15 times a day, but trust me. The community, nobody gets paid for this. We're doing it because we actually care and we want to help. Go ask a question, you'll get an answer. We've all been through this. I also want to give you something else, something that's kind of uncommon. I bet you you guys do this, but every time I talk to a group of IT pros, something happens that's kind of bizarre. I'll ask this question to a bunch of IT pros. How many of you use Twitter? And everybody will go like this. That's not the correct answer. Knock it off. <laughs> so I, and I'm not saying go go. I'm not saying set up Twitter and start tweeting us what you had for lunch. Matter of fact, don't do that, please. Um, but you need to get a Twitter account, even if you just want to look, because where you're going to find the things that are going on is at a Twitter hashtag called hashtag PowerShell. That's where you're going to hear him. You're going to hear the MVPs. And I'm not saying that they're just talking about, here's a cool command. No, you're going to see pointers to, here's how I solve this exchange problem. Here's how I solve this SCVMM issue. Here's how I built this. This is where the latest and greatest information is happening. So get on Twitter. And while you're out there on Twitter following the PowerShell stuff, there's always at Chase Snover. That's him. See, you can Show them how to, do, do they know how to use Twitter? Do, do Show I, you, bring up, bring up uh, IE. Bring, bring, you want me to bring up the Tweetar? The Tweetar. Yeah. Oh, well, now I've, I'm, I'm just the Tweetar and Twitter. I don't know if I can use it this way. Go ahead. You're going to have to help me because this is actually. How hard can it be? Well, I have to sign in. Do, do you know how to do that? Well, okay. You want me to sign in? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, don't laugh at my sign in. It is what it is, guys. It just is what it is. Oops, I think I did the password wrong. Let me, let me. Wait a minute. I'm signing into my Twitter. You're going to see all the stuff that I follow. No, just. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on for crying out loud. Why won't it let me in? Oh, wait a minute. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Con. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know, I know, I know. Oh, my Lord. I know. This is, I don't, this isn't how I get to it. Oh, and now it's making me type in all the device stuff. Are you kidding right. me, guys? How hard can it be? Here, switch to mine. Switch to his. I think his probably works. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. But did you finally get it? No. no. We're looking at yours. <laughs> see, that's, there's mine. There's, 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 let's see. Let me see if I can finally get in. K-S. Uh, what is that? A W? I hate these things. E. You're missing B -A. it. B-A. What am I missing? What am I missing? Last. Had, had a turkey sandwich for lunch. Um, Never mind. That's that's. Uh, I can't get signed into Twitter's mine. Twitter's awesome. So yeah. Twitter's awesome. So you're gonna want to. So follow. here's the thing. E even if you can't get a hold of Twitter, like obviously can't even use Twitter, but can use PowerShell. <laughs> so clearly, did you guys PowerShell see the problem I had with the easier. internet today? And he had to teach me. Um, um, was it the host file? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's e hosts. It's exactly. E -hosts. So. If you can't use Twitter, doesn't mean you can't use PowerShell. That's right. That's right. So use PowerShell. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, on, on behalf of the folks at MVA and of myself, I'd like to thank you for attending this this full day session. And yeah. I would really, sir, like to thank you oh. for spending the entire day. It's been such a great it's a fun. Blast. It's been a blast. I had a great time with you, and I, I had a great time with you. Don't you guys forget? For remember, uh, fill out those polls. We really do. You know, Microsoft really pays attention to that stuff. You know, I know everywhere. You go, they're like, oh, yeah, I fell out the pole. No, no, no. We pay attention to that stuff. If I get a vibe mark, they'll fire me. So please, <laughs> please, please. Just saying. Just saying. Well, fell out the it's, pole. it's been a true yeah, honor to be able to. Correctly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a true honor to have the actual architect, distinguished engineer Jeffrey Snover, to be able to sit down and talk with us about PowerShell. God knows I've learned a lot, and now I have to go and study because now I've, I've, I've learned more and I have to study. Thank you, sir. This has been wonderful. Thanks yeah, a lot. Great. Thanks a lot, guys, and thanks for joining us. We're going to see you at the next one, next scripting one. and toolmaking.